Hey everyone, so it is somehow already time for the October garden tour. Now I think I mentioned in my last tour that August seemed to go by kind of slow, but September has absolutely flown by. I can't believe that it's already fall, but overall the garden is still looking pretty good. I always forget I feel like each year that October on average is actually warmer than it is in May when we are typically starting to plant things outside. So for the most part the garden is looking pretty good. It's definitely emptier than it has been in the previous months and I do have some fall crops that are going that I planted over the last month. So let me show you what the garden is looking like on October 1st. So standing back here is what the garden is looking like overall right now. For the most part the majority of the plants that I think have been here the last few tours are still here. So let's go ahead and start in the usual place with this center raised bed. So starting with what I consider to be the showstopper of the garden are these giant zinnias right here. These have been absolutely amazing. I think they're my favorite part of the garden. I've been able to make so many bouquets with these flowers and as soon as I cut a zinnia I feel like a new one pops up in its place the next day. I did measure these with a measuring tape and they, at least the tallest one that I measured was five foot one inch. I am 5'4", so in the elevated bed they're even more gigantic. If I want to cut one, I have to basically pull it down to my level. But these, like I said, have been amazing. I'll link below, again, where I've gotten the seeds for the plants in my garden. If there's something you have a question on that I haven't linked, let me know in the comments and I will let you know where I got them. But these were started from seed from Johnny Seed, 100% growing them again next year, as well as adding probably a lot more zinnias to my garden. Right below them are the other zinnias. So these I got as plants from a local nursery. Obviously these are not the giant variety as they've only grown, I'd say about a foot. And I'm actually surprised that all of the zinnias are still looking this good because typically by now I'll have some sort of powdery mildew or at least something that warrants me pulling them, but they still look absolutely amazing. There are some dead leaves on the lower branches, but I mean, that's to be expected. Below the zinnias, I have my super bells here in the center. They have not missed the super tunias that were on the corner at all because they have spread out even more. So I think when the super tunias were in here, which again I pulled um, because they were infested with budworms again, so I removed those and then the super bells here have just kind of taken over this front section of the bed. On either side, I have some sweet potato vines that I got from another local gardener, and they've just really filled out the space where the super tunias were pretty nicely. I've never had sweet potato vines in the garden before, and I'm definitely going to add them next year. I think the color, this like dark purple color, is something that I don't have anywhere else, and I absolutely love what it adds to the garden kind of similar to this neon green. I just really love these color combinations, especially right next to each other. So I have those in the corners. I do have some more of the vines in other raised beds, and it's just really nice to have that dimension of things trailing down over these elevated beds. Up in front, I have my two geraniums here in these black pots. Again, these were purchased just kind of as filler plants. I don't think I'm gonna have any geraniums in the garden next year because they are a plant that budworms love and I don't want to have to fight budworms on both supertunias and on geraniums. And then on the ends, either side of the geraniums here, just kind of a mishmash. So I have delphiniums in the center and because they weren't really taking up a lot of room, I went ahead and just added a caladium next to it. Is it the most beautiful container you've ever seen? Absolutely not. Um, but if there is empty space, I always feel like I have to fill it. Now, with these delphiniums, these are specifically made for containers, so they are smaller. And also, after their first round of bloom, I wasn't really impressed. And I was actually thinking of completely removing them. They are perennial, so I should be able to overwinter them and have them grow in this container again. But some people in the comments mentioned that their second round of blooms for their delphiniums were much better, much better show. So I kept them and I think I agree. They're actually on the tail end of their second round of blooms, but the overall bloom stalks were much stronger. They weren't flopping over. And this one especially, I really love again, just this like very rich purple 
color here, almost kind of blue in some lights. But I think that's absolutely beautiful. And this was a mixed pack, so I didn't know what colors I was planting. This one is that deep purple color. The one over here, again, kind of on the end of its life, but you can see it's a much lighter purple color. So I think I am going to keep the delphiniums. I will overwinter these containers and see if they come back. Swinging around over here, let's actually stop at this little table first. Now, before I show you what's on it, I do have an idea for next year for the grape plant that I have, creating some sort of arch over here and having the grapevine trailing over it. I think that would be beautiful. I have no idea if I'm going to actually make that a reality, but I'm putting it in this video so that hopefully it gives me good luck and it will be here next year. But what is actually on this table now is a Gerber daisy that I have right here that's been beautiful blooming throughout the year. And over here is actually a zinnia branch that broke off a couple weeks ago now in a windstorm that we had. So I figured, let's see if I can plop it in water and keep it alive until it blooms. So the bud is swelling, which is a good sign. And also down here, you can kind of see that it is rooting in. So it is producing roots. I think that's really cool. And I'm going to keep it here and see if it flowers. Coming back over here now to my herb rack. So nothing really has changed here except that I did repot some of the herbs. Let me kind of go over to the shadier side here. But I have my chocolate mint, I have my thyme, my oregano, uh, my rosemary, lavender, and my tricolor sage. I'll make a separate video on how I'm going to overwinter these, but I do plan on overwintering the perennial herbs, especially the thyme because that I think overall is my favorite herb. Chocolate mint was also delicious, but thyme is what I use in most of my recipes. I also think I'm not going to use these white pots next year for my herbs. Even though I like the look of them, I think they're just too small. So I'm going to put herbs next year in all of these terracotta type pots. Now starting over here in this corner, I have my hydrangeas that I've already cut the blooms off of to dry. You've probably seen at least one hydrangea video that I'm working on in terms of like dried flower decor, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more. So those I'm going to plan to overwinter again in some sort of covered area. Coming back here, this is a rose plant that I got from a local garden center. I'd already made my purchase, and as I was leaving, this was sitting out there at 30% off. So I couldn't say no. It's my first rose ever, so I have no idea how to care for it. Uh, that'll be part of my winter activity, is researching how to keep roses alive. But I think it's so pretty, and I want to show this little bundle of roses right here. Like, that's just the prettiest little bundle of flowers. So I'm excited to have this in the garden. I'm wondering if it'll make me love roses even more, and I'll just have a ton of roses next year, but we'll see. I only have so much space in my garden. In the raised bed right next to the rose plant, I have my accidental all pink bed. So I have the gomfrini here up front, which I've already dried so many little bundles of, and I plan to dry a bunch more. These I absolutely love. I think after the zinnias, they're my favorite flower in the garden, and I've purchased seeds for next year which includes three other varieties. So I'm gonna grow this variety again next year, and then three other varieties, I think purple, red, and orange colored flowers. So I'm very excited for that next year. Uh, down here, I think again, that's called the Kalanchoa, just popped it in there. And then I have this deep purple maroonish color sweet potato vines that I just popped in the corners. In the back were the asters that I accidentally planted. Well, I planted them, but then threw away the seed packet. There's a lot that are dying, but it's kind of hard for me to reach back there and deadhead them. So that's something I need to think about next year in terms of placement in these raised beds. Do I want to kind of scooch the raised beds forward so I have room to walk around instead of having to reach through these plants? Also just something interesting. So I mentioned I lost the branch from the zinnia plant in a windstorm. That same windstorm, after that, all of these Gonfrina started growing kind of in that direction, which I still think is kind of whimsical and beautiful. So I'm super excited to have even more of the Gonfrina next year. 
in front of this raised bed, I have my berries. So blueberry, strawberry, raspberry. Blueberry did okay. It's still on the smaller side, so I didn't have a ton, but I have gotten so many strawberries and so many raspberries. I'm even thinking about getting a, another raspberry bush because they're my overall favorite fruit. But this blueberry right here, the leaves are already starting to change as the temps are getting cooler, and I really like the color that this one is turning. My strawberry plant here, this is actually two plants in one large container. And I see a ripe berry here that I'm gonna take with me for a snack. So this plant has done really well. It's actually the first time I haven't killed a strawberry plant in my garden. Usually I feel like they get some sort of either pest issue or fungal infection, but fingers crossed, this one's been doing well so far. And then I have my raspberry bush. So this was tiny last year when I got it and planted it. I overwintered both the raspberry and the blueberry just as is in the garden. I didn't do anything special. And I had some other gardeners tell me, you're not gonna believe how fast these grow. And I agree. It is huge. Uh, I think I will, like I mentioned, get another one, but I just I need to make sure that I have room for everything that I wanna have in my garden. So those are the berry plants up front here. Coming next to the raised bed, I have the tomato plant in the middle that you can't see because it's surrounded by my marigolds. But if I come up here close, you can see there is still a tomato growing in the garden. So something I'm trying to figure out for next year, and I think I mentioned this in my what I will and won't grow video, is if I want to have these larger tomatoes. I feel like I don't get very many off of a plant. They take up a lot of room in these 30 gallon grow bags. I might just do more of the smaller size cherry type tomatoes because those always seem to do really well. The Marigold Mountain here, <laughs> still looking good overall. It is kind of dying in the back, but I don't care enough yet to start pulling that. I think this is actually the plant I'm least looking forward to figuring out how I'm going to get it out of the garden. Um, next year, still trying to figure out if I'm going to have these. I really like the color they add to it, but again, they're taking up so much of my limited space. I don't really need that many marigolds. So if I do grow these giant ones again, it'll probably just be a few in like some of the corners to give it that extra height. In front, of the large grow bags. I have this aronia berry plant, which definitely has some sort of powdery mildew issue that I've been treating with neem oil. It hasn't really gotten better, but I'm hoping uh, since this one, I'm gonna be overwintering as well when the leaves fall off and come back next year. Hopefully I'll have some better luck. And then next to that, I have two bags of beets right here, which I don't think I sowed deeply enough, um, but I was able to mound up some dirt around the seedlings and kind of keep them upright. So I think they're looking a little bit better there. Over on this side on the back of the raised bed, I have my grape plant here. And then behind it, um, I have two rhubarb plants. So all of these are gonna be overwintered as well. This is my first year having a grape plant, which I bought on a whim. So if anybody has experience with grape plants, you can see here the leaves are starting to turn yellow. And at first, I was thinking it might be some sort of like nutrient deficiency, but things like iron, I mean the leaves, the veins of the leaves aren't green, which is typically what you see if it's an iron deficiency. They're all a pretty like solid shade of yellow. So I don't know if it's just the leaves changing for the fall or if it is some sort of issue with the plant. So if you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments below. Coming up now into the back of the center raised bed. A few things going on back here. In the corners, so in the four corners actually, I did pop in some of the broccoli seeds with the idea of kind of having them fill up the corner space, but because they're surrounded mostly by the giant zinnias, they don't get as much sun as they should, so we'll kind of see how they do. Next to it, I popped in a few mums just to add some color in the back here because I don't have the same trailing plants that I have up front in the back. This one is just about to bloom. I think it's a darker orange. And then I have this really pretty peachy orange. And then let's go in the shade over here so you can see the colors better. So yeah, I had this peachy orange and then this kind of salmony pink color that I really like in the back here. Same thing over here, another sad little broccoli seedling my two rhubarb plants. So this is my first year with rhubarb and if you have experience with rhubarb you know that you 
don't really want to harvest it until the second or third year, so I'm excited for next year when I can actually harvest and eat the rhubarb. Over in this large 30 gallon grow bag, this is where I had the cherry tomato plant, and I did end up pulling that, and I put in its place some lettuce in the middle, and then some cabbage around the edge. So I do have to thin these. Probably should thin some of them today. I'll add that to my to-do list. Coming up here, this raised bed, we're seeing some more fall crops. I did pop in a random climbing vine there with some push pins just to have it trailing along the wall, or not along the wall, <laughs> along the raised bed. Have some echinacea, which have been amazing at attracting butterflies that I added, and then surrounding it are radishes. I actually did harvest a couple of rounds already. Looks like there's definitely more that will be ready to harvest soon. Interesting, this plant was a, another daisy plant, and I deadheaded the blooms that were, well, dead, and then nothing ever grew back. So I don't know why, if I did something wrong, or it's just some weird issue that happened with the plant, but I mean, it's been bloomless for probably, I don't know, two to three weeks now, so I don't have high hopes of anything coming back. I've done things like fertilizing it. Um, I mean, it gets probably some of the most amount of sun on the deck, so not really sure what the issue there has been. Now, down in front of this raised bed, I have two more strawberry plants, and each of these I actually propagated from the plant I showed you over there by just sticking the runners into some soil, and I had no idea that I would have so many strawberries from a propagation even within just the few months of propagating it. So I've had berries consistently from both of these. It's been really amazing just getting to come out in the morning and pick the strawberries I'm gonna eat for breakfast that day. Swinging over here, I have one more bag of beet seedlings and these I did make sure to plant at the appropriate depth. So hopefully they're gonna be a little bit less floppy. Behind it, I replaced what was sweet peas so I pulled those, I'm trying to think when I pulled those, maybe July, and then I just replaced them with snap peas about a month ago, I'd say. So I'm excited for these to climb up the trellis. I did plant snap peas in the spring and didn't have a trellis system plan at all and looked kind of a mess, so I'm kind of excited to see how well they do with an actual system in place. The dahlias are still beautiful and still doing really well. Definitely having these in the garden next year. The plan is to uh, remove the tubers and overwinter them and then hopefully grow the exact same again next year. I'll see if I need to divide any of these tubers and then also get some more of the tubers or get some more tubers for different varieties and plant those as well. Coming over to this bed here, Again, some more of the vines that I just popped in the front here. I have a pepper plant, which is still doing pretty well. Have a few peppers down. Oh, <gasps> oh no, this broke. I don't know when this broke because I was just looking at it yesterday. Yep, what can you do? Uh, let's see, are these? Eh, still could have waited a little bit longer, but let's go ahead and harvest these. Well, that's kind of sad. I'll put these to the side for now and we'll continue on. Uh, there are still some peppers growing on this plant here. And then behind it, same thing I was doing with the snap peas, I have, or same thing I was doing with the sweet peas, I have snap peas as well. So snap peas there. Giant sunflower I'll come back to in just a second. Snap peas here. Getting my shadow out of the way more snap peas here. So this is where you can see the snap peas the best because there's nothing really in front of it. So these will continue to trail up on these trellises. So back to the center bed. So I had marigolds. These are normal, non-giant marigolds that I bought as a plant just to add some more color. I'm trying to think, I think it was a melon plant that was in here that I ended up pulling. I got a couple melons off of it, so I popped this in just to add something here in this raised bed. And then in the center was one of the sunflowers that I had extra, didn't really have a space for it, so popped it in here. It's, well, it did pretty well. Most of my sunflowers are looking kind of sad now, but basically I'm leaving all of the heads 
on even after the petals fell off so that I can gather the seeds and use them again next year. So one sunflower here, I did pull one completely that was here that had some sort of issue and then I pulled another one that was right here as well. Um, over next to it, I have two iris bulbs that I just planted. Probably recently saw a video for that. Um, so these I will plan to leave out and then hopefully have some irises in the spring. I haven't planted any other bulbs yet because I need to remove what's in the raised beds before I plant the bulbs. So that will probably happen sometime during October, maybe near the end of October. So potentially the November garden tour will be really short and you'll be looking at a bunch of buried bulbs. So we'll see. But obviously as I plant those, I will take you guys along with me. I have my other dahlia right here, which is looking even more beautiful with the blooms that it has on it than the other one. There's just a few more here. So let me take you in close to really look at this. I am just absolutely in love with these. They don't last in arrangements as long as let's say like the zinnias for example so I do tend to leave them on the plant more so than cutting them unless a branch breaks which kind of reminds me one of the things I need to do for next year is just figure out a better support system for these. It's been kind of touch and go just if it looks like something's breaking or flopping over then I'll go in and try to tie it up with some twine but I actually want to have a better planned out support system for the dahlias next year. The last sunflower I have right here, same thing, kind of looking pretty sad, but waiting until the seeds here develop. So that is a look at all of the plants. Let me swing you back over to the other side. There is just this kind of collection of empty pots and bags that I have going here. So basically as I've been pulling plants and haven't had anything to replace it, I've been stacking them over here. The grow bags I plan to empty out as much as I can, run them through the washing machine. I have a video on how I'm cleaning and storing my grow bags over winter. So basically the soil that's in here, I'll plan to put into these raised beds. I will add some compost, add some more nutrients, and then plant the bulbs in there. But as I do all of that, I will be taking you along with me. But this is how everything is looking here in October. And you can see too, the leaves on the trees there are just starting to change. So you know fall is coming, even if it's still 75 degrees outside. So that is the October 1st garden tour. If you've missed any of the previous ones, I'll put a link below to the other garden tours I've done. And I don't even know what the garden tour is going to look like in November, but I think this is probably the last month where we're going to see a lot of plants growing out here. So thank you so much for coming along with me today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.